Hi. I'm here to tell you a little bit about Herod the Wake and the rebellion surrounding the Isle of Eli. Reasons for the rebellion? Well, same as all the other rebellions really at the time, the Normans had taken the land of the people whose land it had been before. And the leader of this rebellion, Herod, was said to have been an English thane. Chances are he'd owned some land and the Normans had taken it from him. This whole Herod the Wake rebellion around the Isle of Eli happened 1070 to 71. And you see, it was a problem for William because these rebels held out for one entire year on their island. So it was very difficult, you see, for, for the Normans to take the island. And to begin with, William was dealing with other problems. Like he was dealing with the north, which you might have learnt about already. That took a lot of his troops. So he had to leave the people in the area to deal with it. And they couldn't, because these men, these rebels, were on an island. An island that had a, a causeway to the sea, so you could actually sail to the Isle of Eli, um, which is precisely what the King of Denmark, King Swain himself, did. So what set up here for, for William is a rebellion on an island that's gaining momentum and it's got the king of another country and a foreign army joining in as well. And before William himself came to, to get involved, two other things happened. One of them was Hereward, his followers, and the King of Denmark and the Vikings went to Peterborough Cathedral, which had been put in the hands of a Norman, raided it, took the treasure and went back to the island with the treasure, um, and in the Vikings' case, went back to the ships with the treasure. And their success in this raid, as well as the fact that they were holding out for months and months and even a year entirely, attracted more supporters, which is the second thing, because a leading uh, magnate, we would say at the time, a very important, powerful person that you might know, known as Morkar, he turned up to help as well. So, you've got Heriwood. You've got a lot of treasure, you've got an island surrounded by marshland and water, and you've got the, the King of Denmark, did I say already? I don't know. All of these things, and the whole thing's lasting a year before William... Da -da -da, turns up. What does William do? Well, he does a number of things. The thing that people always remember is the witch with the bottom out. That's not important for your exam, but it did happen. Um, and if you haven't been explained that yet, then you can ask me. But what he actually did to solve it, first of all, is he decided to pile things into the marshland and build a bit of a bridge across to the island, which he could send his soldiers across to attack. Problem was, the bridge wasn't particularly sturdy. His men were wearing armour. Bridge collapsed. Men went in the marshland. Drowned. Oh dear. So, it's a bit unclear what he did second. But whatever he did, it worked. His men got onto the island... Slaughtered the rebels, the ones that they could get hold of. Any they took prisoner, they punished by chopping arms off or just executing them. Herod himself, we don't know what happened to. Um, but how did he get onto the island? That's the thing. And there's two possibilities. Possibility one. He bribed some monks in the local area who knew a way through the marshland that you could walk. You know, without having to build a bridge, somewhere there was a bit more sturdy land, which was a little bit hidden, maybe just under the water or something. That's one possibility. Possibility two. Is he built another bridge? And this time he made it more sturdy, they got across, and they, they won the battle. Um, but what I've not mentioned is, what did he do about the Vikings and the King of Denmark? Well, what he did in the north is the same as what he did with the Isle of Eli and the Hero with the Rate Rebellion. The Danes maybe came across to try to take the throne of England. Perhaps King Swain had that in his mind. But they also probably came for the money. And so William did the exact same thing as he did in the north. He paid the Vikings to go away. They had a load of treasure from Peterborough Cathedral anyway. They got some more money from William and off they went. So the Danes went away. William attacked the island. Took a little bit of time to take it. But the whole thing fell apart in the end. And there we go. So when you're thinking about those three factors, well, William did show some decisive leadership. He made the odd mistake as well. The, the, the rebellion was quite a strong rebellion. But if we're thinking of coordination, it was at roughly the same time as what was going on in the north. It was just a little bit afterwards. If they'd timed this to happen at the same time and joined forces, 
the whole thing might have worked, but the fact that there was Hereward rebelling down here and the people rebelling in the north up there, it's a lack of coordination. If they'd joined forces, they'd have been stronger. Was there one strong English leader? Hereward the Wake? Had you ever heard of him before this rebellion? No. So it can't have been that powerful. He was a thane, not even an earl. So, And if he's the leader of this thing, well, not particularly the greatest leader, of course, of the English rebellion. Um... And what else have we got there? Lack of English leader, William's leadership, uh, castles. Castles don't come into this particular one as well. So, those are things for you to think about and to write down in your thing. That's Hereward the Wake.